This method to determine the acceleration due to gravity uses a pendulum, which is a weight suspended from a pivot so that it can swing freely. When a pendulum is displaced sideways from its equilibrium position, it is subject to a restoring force due to gravity that will accelerate it back towards the equilibrium position. The time for one complete cycle is called the period. The period is dependent on gravity and the length of the pendulum. For small angled swings, the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length divided by gravity. The materials we need for this experiment include a small basket that is just big enough to fit the phone, yarn, tape measure, scissors, phone, and a pendulum support, which is essentially the place where the pendulum is hung from. This can vary between many things such as a ring stand, but for our convenience, we chose to use a meter stick that is taped between two edges of a table. To ensure that the phone doesn't spin during its oscillation, we decide to give the pendulum two pivot points. First, we place the phone snugly into the basket. Then we tied the basket up with yarn onto the meter stick as shown in the video and apply tape on top to make it more sturdy. However, it is important to note that the string lengths on both sides must be equal, otherwise the swing motion will be crooked. And it is also important to note that the swing motion must be less than 15 degrees, otherwise the equation that we use to calculate gravity derived earlier will not work. Using the Firefox pendulum option, we were able to determine the period. Once this period reading stayed constant, we recorded it in a spreadsheet. For every trial, we also determined the length of the string from the ruler to the surface of the phone using a tape measure. The recorded data was processed in the spreadsheet with the formula gravity equals length times 4 pi squared divided by period squared. And we substituted each recorded value for the length and period into the Excel formula. The values of the periods and string lengths we found were averaged, and their absolute uncertainties were determined by calculating the standard deviation of each data set. Using these values, we calculated the percent uncertainties for length and period. For the period, we multiplied the percentage by 2 since it is squared in the formula. We then added these percent uncertainties to find the overall percent uncertainty. Multiplying this percentage by the value we found for gravity, we get the absolute uncertainty for our value. And therefore, our final answer for gravity is 9.4 plus minus 0 0.1 meters per second squared. This method to determine the acceleration of gravity involves swinging our phone horizontally in a circular motion. Looking at the following diagram, we will stop the mass big M from falling by providing centripetal force through rotating our phone with mass little m. The force of gravity acting on the phone is balanced out by the vertical component of tension to keep the phone from accelerating downwards. The horizontal component of tension will then be our centripetal force. Using this concept, we can derive our equation. We write that the horizontal component of tension equals the centripetal force. We write the centripetal force as the mass of the phone times the radius times the angular velocity squared. We can also write the tension force as big M times gravity. We move the variables around to get the equation gravity equals mass of the phone times the radius of the circular motion times angular velocity squared divided by big M times cos theta. These are the things you will need for this experiment. Attach a mask to the bottom of the string. Put the string through the glass tube. Put your phone in a bag and attach the bag to the other end of the string. Test your apparatus by spinning something of similar mass to your phone first to make sure it's safe. Then mark a line somewhere along the string. While you spin your phone, make sure the glass tube remains on top of this mark to keep the spin consistent. We used centripetal acceleration on Firefox to find the angular velocity over time. We repeated this five times Average the result for our angular velocity, then use the standard deviation for our uncertainty. To find the angle, we use inclination on Firefox. However, Firefox is inaccurate at finding the angle while the phone is rotating. So we had to catch the phone out of the air, then flip it so the phone is facing up. We recorded 12 angles, then repeated the catch five times. 
We then found the average angle, then used the standard deviation for our uncertainty. The uncertainties for our measurements of mass and radius were based upon the smallest division of our scales and rulers. So plus or minus 0 0.00001 kilograms and plus or minus 0 0.0005 meters. Finally, we put all our data into our original formula and we end up with the value of gravity of 9.53 plus or minus 2.84 meters per second squared. The force of the spring is given by the equation F is equal to negative kx, where F is the force of the spring, k is the spring constant, and x is the distance the spring is dis displaced. To find the gravitational acceleration g, the spring should be hung vertically, so that only the force of gravity acts on the spring. Thus, the force on the spring can be written as negative kx is equal to mg. However, notice that we do not have the values for any of the variables. First, let's find the spring constant k. To solve for k, we can use the formula for the period of an oscillating spring. t is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. If we isolate k, we get the equation k is equal to 4m pi squared over t squared. Now we just have to solve for t. To solve for t, we first hang the spring with the phone attached to it. We then open Firefox on the phone and hit the spring option. This will give us the period when the phone is in motion. Pull the spring down, let go, and record the value that Firefox gives you. This is the period. Now to find x, first hang the spring and measure the initial length. Afterwards, put your weight on the spring. In this case, it's your phone. Record the final length and take the difference between this length and the initial one to get x. Now plugging in the formula we found for k earlier, back into the equation negative kx is equal to mg. We have the equation 4mx pi squared over t squared is equal to mg. Notice that the masses cancel out to give 4x pi squared over t squared is equal to g. We have x, we have t, now we can solve this equation to find the gravitational acceleration g. The final calculated value for g using the spring method is calculated by taking the average of all of the values of g we found in each trial. We used a different method for some of the trials. We couldn't take the average of the percent errors as well to find the respective final error, so we resorted to using the standard deviation for the final error instead. Our final answer for the gravitational constant g is therefore 8.9 plus or minus 0 0.6 meters per second squared. This experiment involves energy. We have a vertically placed meter stick as well as a ping pong ball dropped from 0 0.5 meters. Each drop is detected by the elastic collision VFOX tool on the phone. As we see in our first column, we have completed a total of 10 trials. In the next two columns, we have our data retrieved from VFOX itself. We have measured both the height in meters and time in seconds of the initial ball drop for a total of 10 trials. Next, we can calculate the gravitational acceleration by inputting our FIFOX determined height and time into our equation. We will drive our equation starting with the acceleration equation, distance equals V initial times time plus 1 over 2 times acceleration times time squared. We disregard the V initial times time part of the equation because we consider our starting point or time of reference to be at the maximum point H1 as it has zero velocity before it is dropped down again. Time is also divided by 2 based on each drop and our equation is then derived to height equals 1 over 2 times gravity times time divided by 2 squared. Additionally, we have a column on relative to the initial drop's retained energy. We obtain these numbers from FIFOX itself as it shows the ratio of energy retained after every drop as a percentage.
We have now determined the gravitational constant 9.8077 meters per second squared and applied an uncertainty of 0.009305 by means of standard deviation of the 10 determined gravity values. In this experiment, we'll be using the pressure equation P equals F over S, S representing the surface area. And from that, we can get P times S equals F. Since the gravitational force here is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration, then we can get F divided by M equals G. From that, we can get our final equation, G equals pressure times surface area divided by mass. Equipment we use are an object, a device that has the sensor to get rotated from the barometer, a scale to measure the mass, and a tape to measure the surface area. The experiment starts with placing the object on top of the device. After removing the object, collect the pressure differentiation before and after the experiment, export the data to a spreadsheet, and then analyze it. Repeat the same procedure and get five set of data. Using standard deviation to calculate the uncertainty, and the final gravitational acceleration we get is 10.725 plus or minus 0.804. This method uses free flow to figure out the gravitational acceleration. The equation we use is one of the motion equations. S equals vi t plus 1 over 2 times acceleration times t squared. The object is still, which means the initial velocity would be zero. And the final equation we have here is S equals 1 over 2 times acceleration times t squared. S is the distance traveled by the object, which is the height of the falling. T represents the time of falling, which is also the variable we are going to get from the experiment. Doing a free fall, the only vertical acceleration applied on the object is the gravitational acceleration, the g. The equation then can be written in g equals 2s over t squared. In this experiment, we use the tape to measure the distance traveled by the object. Acoustic stopwatch in Firefox is used to record the falling time. In order to fully receive the sound, the threshold is set as 0.2 AU and the minimum DNA as 0.3 seconds. After a few trials, we decided to increase the distance of falling. Then we put the object on top of the ruler. The phone is then put in half of the height. Make sure to reset the timer before the experiment. To ensure that there are no vertical forces applied on the object, we use a pen to heat the ruler from one side and repeat the procedures to get 10 trials in total. Repeat same procedure to complete 10 trials of experiment. Record the data collected in the spreadsheet and calculate the uncertainty using standard deviation. As a result, the gravitational acceleration we get is 9.797 plus or minus 0.189. This experiment is conducted inside of a moving elevator. From the free body diagram, an elevator support force is increased for the first few seconds moving upwards, which applies an upward acceleration. Based on the graph, Net force equals the support force minus the gravitational force. It also equals m times a, where m represents the mass of the device we are using right now. The difference of the support force and the device gravitational force will reflect on scale. And in this case, we use r to represent the reading. Therefore, net force can be written in two ways. 
The reading times the gravitational acceleration, or the mass of the device, times the elevator's acceleration. Finally, it gives us the final equation, g equals m times a divided by r. To conduct the experiment, place a phone on the scale in the elevator. Then tell the scale to the mass of the device. Open Firefox and start the measurement of elevator. Let the elevator move upwards. Recall the maximum value shown on the scale and transform it on the spreadsheet. Repeat the same procedure six times. Recall the data collected and use standard deviation to calculate uncertainty. The final result we get for gravitational acceleration is 9.015 plus or minus 0.8090. The net force of a box sliding down a ramp can be calculated with mg sine theta equals mass times acceleration, where a is the acceleration of the car going down the ramp, g is gravity, theta is the angle of the ramp, and m is the mass. As seen with the formula seen right now, because m or mass is on both sides of the equation, they cancel out and we can ignore it. To solve for theta, we can put the phone on the ramp and use the inclination tool in the tool section of the Firefox app. I placed the phone on the ramp and waited 30 seconds for the angle to stabilize as the Firefox app tends to fluctuate within the first 15 seconds of trying to measure an angle. To solve for A, we use the acceleration without gravity in the raw sensor section of the Firefox app. We can do this by placing the phone on the car and using the acceleration sensor to measure the acceleration as it speeds down the ramp. We assumed friction to be negligible because we have a car with wheels instead of a box which has a much higher coefficient of friction. After we collected the data, we can infer from the original formula that the acceleration of gravity can be calculated by the acceleration of the car going down the ramp is meters per second squared divided by the sine of the angle of the ramp. In our case, when we used our data, it equated to 9.6 meters per second, which is quite accurate considering the tools we used.